Alpha is giving, beta is receiving. How good are you at receiving? And what would it take to become a better receiver? Because it's the gift where you let other people give. You let other people show up. Pain is a sharpening of our soul. It's, it's what lets us harvest and learn lessons. We don't have to learn every lesson through pain, but sometimes it brings us to the proximity of things that we would never ask or go through otherwise. Make sure you're harvesting all those lessons during that time. And when you get in the loop, ask for help. Someone can ask you a question you can't ask yourself to find the answer that's already within. And if you're in play to win, like candidly, I did a, a I took some, after this was all over, I took some mushrooms at my cabin and uh, it took me through a process where everything was slow with the music, slowed down, but it let me feel the frenetic striver of trying to hustle and grind and it was suffocating. I couldn't breathe and I was standing up and I was laying down and I was like, I was like, what is all this? Where's this coming from? And it was like, this is generations of worry. This is generations of isolation. This is the wrong process for far too long. This is holding on to things and resentments. And this is lack of responsibility. And this is where you don't fully accept and love yourself. And this is where you judge yourself for the mistakes. And this is where you still want other people to do things that they didn't do, putting your agenda on them. And I was like, oh, shit, there it is, an agenda. An agenda society passed down to me that I thought would make me more lovable. And it turned out it made me more difficult to be around. And so I'm working on how can I have less conditions and unwritten expectations and listen? How can I be more in co-creation rather than frustration? Where can I speak up when it's inconvenient, but it's required? for the growth of both parties. And maybe the hard things to speak up about are lessons for you and the person you're speaking to, not just you. Maybe you've got the key to show them something, you know, like they say in Spider-Man with great power comes great responsibility. The problem is if we're too busy in resentment and frustration and anger and pointing out problems and complaining and difficulty and, and all that, we lose our power and we lose our peace. Money on Mass came out and I've never been <laughs> less in pain about a book launch and more excited about a book. That's, the, that's a strange phenomenon for me. And what it showed me recently in the, you know, the frenetic nature of everything's slower and I'm running was I've just been a master at creating artificial deadlines, artificial timelines that nobody cares about but me. And then I want other people to care about it and then we're all in stress because I invented some deadline. And so October 3rd comes was it October? What, I don't even know. Yeah, October 3rd comes and Money on Mass comes out. And I'm just like, I had my friends in town. I was like, we're definitely not going to push to do a big launch for October 3rd. Corey's baby's coming. I'm like, even if we do this after the, like, we have the basic website done. We have things happening in December for financial advisors. But I'm not like, in the past, I would be hitting the phones. I'd be, you know, exhausting myself. And I've just let it breathe. And by letting it breathe, we're going to be fine. It might be a little bit different timeline. I still think it's going to be the biggest financial book of all time, but that doesn't happen in one week or two weeks or even two months. And so we put all these artificial deadlines on us that nobody else cares about, but us. And we have to ask, why are we putting this deadline on ourselves? Do we have capacity? Is there breathing room? Is it what we really want? We're here at free flow looking to reinvent the game of business to be one of ethics and co-creation, collaboration and production being measured in fulfillment and money, not just money alone. So that's when you find your flow. I've been doing these webinars recently on intellectual property DNA. If you've been around me, you've heard me talk about investor DNA quite often, but intellectual property DNA, when people oh, they always ask Corey, like, oh, should I do a podcast? Or they'll ask him, hey, what do you think about this marketing thing? It depends, who are you and how do you like to create? I look at the things I abandoned over time because I didn't, it wasn't part of my IP DNA. It's not how I like to create. I love to write. So why not write? I love to not, I don't love to interview people, but I love to go back and forth with someone. Like if Corey and I do a, a YouTube video, we have fun. We go back and forth. We could tease each other. Like, that's great. But if I'm just interviewing, like, 
I interview, like if I'm interviewing Robert Kiyosaki, that's just the most boring hour of my life. I did that. It was, the, it was just awful, right? Like I don't want to interview. I want to, I want to go back and forth. So I'm learning my IP DNA, which is going to be able to create more content and more flow instead of sitting down with the, you know, and like doing what everybody else is doing. Even if it's like, what if you made a little bit less doing your IP DNA than doing what everybody else told you, but you had more time to yourself, you enjoyed your business a little bit more, you had less stress and your health got better. I'm not even saying it's either or. I'm just saying that we get so stuck in society telling us what to do and what's important and what everybody else is doing is what we should copy. And if we check the boxes, here's the deal. You check the boxes and you get disappointed because you find out if you didn't love the work, if you didn't design a game worth winning, that it's all losing in the end. You get the outcome without the fulfillment. Society wants to shortcut fulfillment. They want to get rid of the things that we love the most because of outcomes. If we're addicted to outcomes and not fulfilled in the process, we lose. And the higher the stakes are, the harder it is to see. The more identities wrapped up in something to prove to something else, the more blinders we have. Why do things take off in culture? Why do things take off in culture? And there's so much unresolved emotion that humanity has. Unprocessed, unrecognized, they're sitting there in pain, they're afraid to speak up, they don't have courage, they don't wanna be judged so they hold back, they complain about things, like a lot of times when we complain about politicians or we complain about the news, it's because we don't wanna deal with real things going on in our life that we see and touch every day, right? So it's easy to get in that external global situation. And this is what my, this is how I feel. Money Unmasked is what I'm going to unveil here is there's things in that book that are bold and important that people haven't said, but they've thought. And the way it takes off in culture is when it's been given voice to the unspoken and the voiceless. And so as you're creating your business, as you're creating your tribe and your community, the more you can see and hear them and get deeper with them to know what's really at the core the more you'll speak into the culture and culture will take it over and do it with you. So it's not just about effort. It's about boldness. It's about courage. The people that we admire the most, I think are the most vulnerable. They share so much of their life that they feel so real. And you're like, are they the most articulate? Maybe not. Are they even the best looking? Maybe not. Are they the smartest? Definitely not, because sometimes intellect gets in the way of authenticity. So what happens when you give a voice to the voiceless with your business is people feel seen, felt, and heard. And they want to be around you because you show them a part of themselves that no one else allowed them to see. So today's topic is not really about pain, it's about intimacy. And the more intimate we could be with each other, where we're sharing the things that nobody else talks about, and we're willing to open up about the struggles that we've had or are currently having, or the losing games that we played or that we're currently playing, or the fears and inadequacies. Yesterday, like I, I think it was the first time on a discovery session, I said, every time we go into an immersion, there's moments of doubt that I have of what if this is the time I can't do it? Like I have someone that's I'm really close to that's like, I really am messed up with my money map. I'm wealthy, but I feel broke. And I'm, and I'm like, man, what if I can't get her there? And what I realize is that's only when it's making it about me and it's about my ego and about getting the credit instead of bearing witness to someone feeling safe enough to express the things. And I don't really have to do the work. If we have vulnerability, a safe space, we have trust, we get to that intimacy, which leads to breakthrough, and we finally feel connected. Hey, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And if you're enjoying these videos, well, there's good news. More where that came from. So go ahead and click through and watch the next video now.